and look out in your faces. And I want to be a blessing to you. I want you to hear God's voice this morning. I want you to feel His presence stirring within you. I want to give you the greatest gift you've ever received. It comes in the third chapter of John, verse 16 and following. For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only son and whoever whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. This then is the verdict. Light has come into the world but men love darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that his de deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light <clears throat> so that it may be plainly seen that what he has done has been done through God. There is no greater gift. I bought this little crystal glass into the worship service this morning. It's hard to visualize something precious. Our eyes need something tangible sometimes. This pretty little glass I saw and I thought, I'm going to make that represent what God did for us in sending His Son. It's beautiful. It's filled with a rose color. And I know from conversations I've had through the years that it's not just the glass itself, but what they put inside of it. You can't get that rose color without putting gold inside the glass and mixing it thoroughly. And when you find a rose colored glass, it's some of the most expensive glass you're going to find. Because that red color comes at a cost. The glass sings. Uh, well, let me use my little bell hammer here. The other day I was uh, practicing in the kitchen of the house. I had my finger a little bit moist and I rubbed it on the top of the glass. And it started to sing very, very loudly. Judy came out of the back bedroom, what in the world are you doing out here? I said, I'm playing with my glass. <laughs> and it was singing as I rubbed my finger, my moist finger, on the top edge of the glass. I'm not going to do it for you this morning because, first of all, my finger's not wet and I'm not that good at it. <laughs> what would you do if you had a beautiful crystal glass? What would you do if somebody handed this to you and said, this is my gift of love to you? What would you do? Where would you set it? How would you take care of it? How would you make sure it was protected? How would you take care of its value?
Well, God gave us a gift. A precious, precious gift. He gave us His one and only Son. I know most of you have accepted Him at some time in your life. I know that you have felt Him forgive your sins and have felt absolutely sparkling clean on the inside. <laughs> I was a young married man when I finally said, you know, the Lord was talking to me and He says, it's time we get settled some things. We got to get some things straightened out between you and me. <laughs> and I sort of went into negotiation. I'll do it when I get home, Lord. I don't want to do it in front of these people. They'll think I'm a terrible person. They'll think I've done something awful and that the only way I can get forgiveness is to come. I know all these people. They're my friends. And they will think strange things. Why would some preacher's kid go up in the middle of a statewide pastor's conference? And he kept pulling on my heart. I kept pulling on my heart. Finally, I got down to where I didn't have anything else to say, and I said, I'd have to ask my father-in-law to move out of the way so I could get out of the pew. <laughs> and my Lord and my Savior laughed at me and said, what a dumb thing to say when I have given you such a precious gift. What a dumb reason not to accept it. And you're going to walk out here just as empty as you walked in. If you don't take me now. What a revival service happened that night. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I say I was the only one up there? Yeah, I was the only one up there. But there was one person in that place who had a revival Amen. that changed me. Changed me. And took the gift. And later when he called me into his service, I accepted another gift. thankful for those things. But the part of my heart that is heavy, the part of my heart that is grieving this morning, is there a number of phrases in that thing that says, if you don't believe, if you don't accept, you're condemned already. You're condemned already. That breaks my heart. Without Jesus Christ, we are condemned without hope. There's only one thing that breaks my heart even more. It's words written in the sixth chapter of Hebrews. You won't hear preachers preach on it very often. I won't know that I've ever preached on it before. Because the words are the worst, most harsh, most convicting of any words written in the entire inspired Word of God. Because there are people in my life, in my experience, who have known God's forgiveness and grace, who have loved Him, who have served Him, who felt God's Spirit move, have felt the miracles come through their ministry, through their lives, through their testimony.
and then turned away and went another way. Here's what the writer of Hebrews writes in the sixth chapter, starting with verse 4. It is impossible for those who have once been enlightened, who have tasted of the heavenly gift, who have shared in the Holy Spirit, who have tasted the goodness of the Word of God and the powers of the coming age, if they fall away to be brought back to repentance, because to their loss they have crucified the Son of God all over again and subjected Him to public disgrace. Jim Deal was at Men's Fellowship, Men's Retreat. And he said, my brothers, don't break the trust God has placed into your hands a special gift. He has given you His salvation. He's given you His forgiveness. He's given you your hope. He has given you His love. He has poured Himself out for you. Don't break the trust. Don't throw away the gift He has given you. Don't treat it casually. Treasure it. Hold on to it. Protect it. Guard your heart. Hold it close. Don't break the trust. But I've had friends, good friends, precious friends, who for one reason or another decided they were smarter than God, who understood things that God didn't know, who thought they could figure it out on their own. And after having felt His love, had felt His grace, and testified to the power of His love, they went into business for themselves. They went their own way. The pastor who was preaching at the congregation where I was serving, who had his congregation pray that people would be called out into full time Christian service. And they knelt and they prayed over and over and over again, and God called. Judy and I into his ministry partly out of that man's service who was there the day I told my pastor and my friends what God had done to call me into ministry and he was already violating the trust that God had placed into his hands it broke my heart. I had a brother in the Lord who had years and years of ministry who told me that he was leaving his wife, leaving his family to marry somebody else because they thought he thought it would make a better partnership for his pastoral ministry. And I said, no! God doesn't work that way. He doesn't say it's forbidden on one side, but it's okay for you. And he threw it all away. I pleaded with him. I, I cold coaxed him so hard. Please don't do this. 
It will ruin everything. But he took that precious gift. And he threw it away. And it's happened. Not many times, but too many times. Because they forgot the precious nature of the gift. I remember when I thought about doing this, I was going to step on the glass. <laughs> I'd wrap it in a towel. <laughs> They're going to go ahead and just break it all up. You know what? I can't. I can't do it. It's just a silly glass. It means nothing. But even as a symbol, it's too precious for me to destroy. Amen. Amen. Play your heads with me. Lord Jesus, you had 12. 12 special friends. And we know them by name. They lived with you. They worked with you. They knew you. You sent them out to heal the sick and raise the dead and throw out the demons. They knew what your power was. They knew what your authority over the forces of this world really were. They were all in the boat when you stilled the storm and saved their lives. They were there when you raised Lazarus from the dead. They were there when you knelt down and washed their feet. And yet one of them, and I don't know why, I can't get my mind around why, the one who was called Judas Iscariot. I don't know what was in his heart and he would take such a precious gift and throw it away for a handful of coins. But you know what it feels like to have someone you love throw away the precious gift. Crush it under their heel, their free will. You know what that feels like when you received His kiss in the garden. With a kiss. You're doing it with a kiss. Did someone, someone not tell you what a kiss is supposed to say? What it's supposed to be? It's not supposed to be a betrayal. Lord, I don't know what someone might be struggling with here in this group. Playing with the temptation Playing with an idea. Playing with an emotion. Toying around just a little bit with the thought of a possible that doesn't make any difference. God's going to forgive. It's no problem. And they're putting their very lives in danger. I don't know what Satan might be coaxing in the heart of people here. Lord Jesus, remind us this morning. Remind us this morning of your precious gift. 
It comes only from you. There isn't any place else to go to get this gift. It only comes from you. It comes out of your loving sacrifice for us. It was, comes from your words from the cross. Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Don't let us take that for granted. Don't let us treat it as though it has no value. Call our hearts by your Spirit to repentance. Give us the courage to fall on our knees and say, Father, forgive me. I can feel your Spirit still working with me. You haven't given up on me. I'm still yours. You still love me. And you're calling me to come back. Father in heaven, work your miracle of grace again today. Amen. As the praise team comes up for a closing song, we believe, or one of the ones that you've sung here this morning, if you have something you need to pray about, if there's something that you've been thinking, feeling, wanting, Hungering for. God love to work with you. I don't want you to destroy what God has given you.